Oliver Monikerl, you are the Assistant uh, General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists. Now, journalism has long been a dangerous game, so to speak. People do get wounded, people get killed. Apparently, the situation is very bad in Turkey at the moment. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, well, since, uh, since the beginning of June, uh, the last elections, um, the journalism in Turkey has witnessed an, a very intense period of oppression where the government has pulled out all stops possible to control and intimidate and quieten and, and muzzle journalists in the build up to the election, to the second elections that took place uh, uh, on Sunday. Why do you think this is? I mean, uh, Turkey has the sort of uh, reputation, first of all, of being a secular country, for, secondly, of being liberal, and thirdly, wanting to join the EU. Why would Erdogan be creating such problems for journalists, do you think? Um, all governments want to control the media. All governments want to control the media message. I think what's happened here, over, over the period of a decade, the, gov the AKP government put in place the structures to control the mainstream corporate media through a combination of devices, whether that's um, offering bribes through government contracts or whether that's intimidating or prosecuting a whole series of journalists over the past decade. Um, so the, the, the climate has been put in place to make it very hard for journalists to operate. Why would, why would he do it? It's about, it's about control uh, and, and maintaining power. What we've, why things have been so difficult these last three months is because the government has been in, a, in, 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 in panic. Um, it's had a completely hysterical reaction um, in an attempt to, re, to, to, to reclaim its power and to make sure that it wins one enough votes as it managed to do this Sunday. And part of that, that process was controlling intimidating media. What can we do, apart from events such as today and obviously highlighting the situation, what can journalists internationally do to change the situation, do you think? Well, in our role at the, the RFJ, um, we, we, we work very closely with the, with the journalists on the ground. We have our affiliate there, which is the, the, the Journalists Union of Turkey. They are doing an extraordinary effort um, at both um, recruiting and um, uh, supporting the journalists who are being prosecuted, journalists who are being sacked, journalists who are unable to operate, journalists who are trying to survive on 200 or 300 euros a month. It's very hard to be a hero when, you're, when you're, your monthly uh, wage pack is 300 euros a month. Um, most importantly, what they're trying to do is they're trying to create a sense of solidarity amongst a very diverse and disparate group of journalists that work for a whole series of very divided, uh, politicised media. And what they're trying to emphasise is that if journalists are to save themselves as their profession, they have to cooperate, they have to um, work together regardless of their political differences um, and recognise that they represent one profession, one set of, one set of principles. Finally then, do you feel there is hope for this situation to be improved? The situation is very, very serious um, and I think the next few months uh, we will see what sort of measures the AKP, which has now a very long and distinguished history of oppression against journalists, how they will react in the post-election environment. The positives are that the journalists in Turkey have an incredible passion for their profession um, they have a history of fighting for their rights. It's part of their culture, which we've seen over the last 70 or 80 years. They've been through difficult p periods before. And also they have, um, uh, they have an organisation which can lead and can protect them. And that's what they need to rally around.